So I've already talked about why I'm sexist, so today I'll be talking about why I'm racist. So Black Panther is unfortunately a very mediocre film, and I say unfortunately because I was really disappointed. I really wanted to like Black Panther. I really like this character in Civil War, and I like the idea of the plot being similar to Lion King, but what really comes down to it is the execution. There's a good movie hidden in Black Panther somewhere, but they ruined it with bad acting, terrible effects, obnoxious characters, and just some overall really bad decisions. So let's go ahead and dive deep into this pussy and see why this movie is disappointing. All right, so we get the history of Wakanda, then we go straight to California in 1992. We are then introduced to the prince and his friend and the Amazon women who are speaking a different language for some reason. And you might think it makes sense they're from a different country, but MCU never does this. The whole universe ignores language barriers, so why even do this? Why even attempt to have a different language? Because when I see two characters from Wakanda speaking English as opposed to their native tongue, I'm gonna ask myself, why aren't they speaking in their native tongue? So then they do this really stupid f***ing thing where the Amazon women hit the ground with their spears and the lights go off. I don't know how that happened, but it does. And then the King of Wakanda just kind of teleports in there when the lights come back on. I can just imagine him waiting for his cue when the lights turn off and then he runs in the room. <laughs> So as it turns out, the king traveled all the way to California to confront his brother for stealing vibranium. We get a shot of Kid Killmonger, and now we're in the present time. So we're introduced to Black Panther, and he's saving a bunch of, I don't know, sex slaves or some shit. I will say the character Black Panther is easily the best part of the movie. I have no idea why people called him boring when pretty much the rest of the movie is more bland than my voice. So after a meh fight scene, we see, holy shit, a practical costume. I want to enjoy this moment of seeing something real because later on in the movie, they switch a the suit for some CGI crap, and it looks terrible. Apparently, Chadwick had trouble breathing in the suit, so they had to switch it out, which is really unfortunate because this is one of the coolest looking superhero suits I've ever seen. Also, why'd you cock your gun if you're not gonna shoot people with it? Speak nothing of this day. Really? Are you honestly telling me that none of the victims say a word about what happened? Look, I understand that their lives were just saved by Black Panther, but still, not one person didn't talk about how a super panther man took down an army along with his sidekick, Frieza. We are then introduced to T'Challa's family, Queen Boring and Princess Shithead. When it comes to Shuri, you either love or hate this character. I fall into the hate category. She is obnoxious. I guess she's supposed to be the funny character in the movie, even though she's not funny. Haha, <laughs> she put her middle finger up. That totally didn't look forced or awkward at all. So we get the introduction of Killmonger and Claw. I don't know why, but Michael B. Jordan decides to, I don't know, deliver one of the most unemotional performances I've ever seen. Don't get me wrong, Michael B. Jordan is a good actor, but he just seems very sleepy. But I can't really blame him for being tired. He did have other things to do. All right, so... <laughs> All right, so T'Challa is becoming king, and the only thing standing in his way is a challenger. Kind of weird that this utopia still determines leadership through tribal combat. But I guess they were all lucky having a great leader who would continue to keep Wakanda prospering. Believe it or not, guys, it takes mostly brains to run a f***ing country. This is the modern age. Physical strength doesn't mean jack shit when it comes to leadership anymore. But what makes a good king, hmm? What about strength? Yes. Strength. King Robert was strong. He won the rebellion and crushed the Targaryen dynasty. And he attended three small council meetings in 17 years. He spent his time pouring and hunting and drinking until the last two killed him. This corset is really uncomfortable. So could we all just wrap it up and go home? Haha, uh -huh, she's so quirky, I relate. <laughs> we have watched with disgust as your technological advancements have been overseen by a child. I know you want to hand the nation over to this prince who could not keep his own father safe. Hmm. All of these are pretty good points. Eh, yeah, whatever. I'll just prove him wrong by beating him to death. <laughs> no powers? Really? A royalty-free sound effect? Don't you guys have a budget of 200 million? Maybe you guys should have used that money to be a little more authentic. Just a boy, not fit to leave. Show him who you are! Yeah, show him you're a better leader by displaying that you're physically superior to him. This is fucking stupid. 
so T'Challa beats the racist stereotype and becomes king of Africa or some shit. This movie has a pretty clear message about accepting refugees into first world countries, but the comparison is kind of off since Wakanda is more advanced than any country in the world. So it's pretty much a given that they could help others while defending themselves. If Wakanda was like America, you know, a country that is thriving but has its own problems, then I can see where the controversy comes from. But here, you have a utopia with nearly endless supplies and have the ambitions to help others. So what's the f***ing problem? And there's such a big deal about it, why not just help people in secret as opposed to going going all out and showing your own country. We're then shown Shuri's lab and all of its messy CGI glory and... And what are these? The real question is what are those? Oh boy. I'm gonna be honest, I wasn't the biggest fan of this joke, but even if I was, I would still call this outdated, even when the movie came out. You should never put memes in your movie. When memes become mainstream and are put in big production movies for a mass audience to see, everyone is gonna then hate it. The only exception I've seen of a meme working in a movie is from Into the Spider-Verse because that joke actually had relevance in the movie and they actually put thought into the joke. But jokes like that usually never age well and when people look back at this movie today, they will cringe even harder than they did in the theaters. Nikki helps the group get inside the club through an Asian woman and the group spreads out to find Claw. A woman outside. What's Trava was she referring to? How could you possibly know that's what they were talking about? Do you speak Korean? But then again, seeing how the Korean spoken in this movie was deemed terrible by pretty much everyone, I'm surprised Nakia could even understand the Korean woman. So the casino is in the middle of a showdown between T'Challa's group, Claw's group, and the CIA. The CIA is there to make a deal with Claw, but T'Challa wants to handle the situation on his own. Unfortunately, Frieza gets compromised in the process. We get this very sluggish fight scene. I will commend the movie for trying to do a cool one-take fight scene, but every character moves incredibly slow. Did they even see Civil War? Because Black Panther was moving lightning fast in that movie. He should have been taking on at least five guys in this scene. We get to the infamous, but also horrendous, car chase scene, where the CGI shines brighter than Frieza's bald head. So instead of, I don't know, using those EMP weapons that instantly shut down vehicles from the beginning of the movie, T'Challa continues to just ride a car towards Claw. In fact, why is T'Challa even riding a car when we saw that in Civil War he could outrun cars? What is even the point of this stupid sequence? It's f***ing pointless and looks terrible. And worst of all, it creates continuity errors. Reminds me of another movie. Don't you use a spear as a weapon? Why hasn't your advanced society created vibranium guns? I'm sure that could penetrate pretty much anything. Why is your advanced society wasting money and resources on an arcade car game? Just shoot her! No. You should have been flying through the windshield. You weren't even wearing a seatbelt. Where did you get this weapon? You n didn't deserve it. A few moments later. It's called diplomacy. You're welcome. But they're nice. Americans. Yes, damn you Americans for handling things in a more diplomatic way. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go throw a spear at a world leader. That's how we handle relations in Wakanda. So Claw gets rescued, Ross gets shot, and he's taken to Wakanda. Later on, Killmonger captures Claw just so he could kill him. Yeah, I don't f get it either. Dean ends today! Put your gun down now! It's gonna be okay. Hey buddy, why don't you just shoot Claw in the head? I understand this movie wants to display Killmonger as some cold-blooded killer, and he'll do anything to get the throne, but this was a terrible way of showing it. Savages. This is what they do to people like us. I ain't worried about no brain. Check these out. Each one is for a kill. Are you f***ing tired or something? So we get the very, very sad story of Killmonger's dad getting killed by T'Challa's dad. So, your uncle betrayed us? No. <laughs> you might want to do a retake on that, guys. No, no, no. Alright, where am I? Don't scare me like that, colonizer. This guy took a bullet for one of your people, not to mention he could snitch on your whole country once he leaves. Maybe you should try being a bit nicer. It is, after all, in everyone's best interest. Or you can continue to be a rude asshole and just try to be quirky and funny. Oh, oh, Wakanda forever! 
So Killmonger enters the country with Claw's body, even though he didn't need the body of Claw to enter the country, and instead just had to show everyone the ring of his uncle in order to prove who he is. And you might be saying, well, maybe he's trying to prove his worth by showing the dead body of Claw, someone they've been chasing for years. Well, maybe if these morons didn't decide everything through tribunal combat, then maybe that would have been an important factor. So T'Challa and Killmonger are duking it out, and I have to say, this is a really good fight scene. I know I said earlier the fight scenes range from bad to meh, but the reason why this one stands out is because there's no f***ing CGI. It's all practical except for the green screen effect, but that's okay because it looks fine. The choreography is also really good too. It's a real shame that their final fight in the movie isn't even the same caliber. That shit raped my goddamn eyeballs. <laughs> Well, maybe you shouldn't be basing leadership off of physical strength alone, you f morons. So, Killmonger has flashbacks. After seeing the ship fly away, he then runs to his dad's apartment. And then he walks. I guess he stops caring midway through the run. So, Killmonger picks up his dad's carcass and holds it in a very cliched movie position. Then we actually get to a decent scene between Killmonger and his dad. Sterling K. Brown is probably the best actor in this movie, and he sells every scene he's in. It's all of it. So when it comes time for another king, we will be ready. Yeah, go ahead and burn all that. My king, we cannot do that. It is our tradition. <laughs> so are the kings of Wakanda allowed to do, like, whatever they want or some shit? Because this guy literally almost choked an old woman to death. You would think this advanced society would have a parliament, representatives, or some sort of chamber to keep the king in check because it seems like this guy has absolute power. I'm finding it very hard to believe that an absolute monarchy can get this far in today's society and build a utopia that they have currently. Burn it all! Burn them all! A genius, you're not immortal. Maybe when you get an heir, he will be able to stabilize Wakanda in the future. Burn it all! Yeah, okay, whatever. Kill Mongoloid wants to get revenge on white people for oppressing his people, even though every race throughout history has oppressed another race, but whatever, I'll buy into this white devil mentality. And he also wants to give weapons of mass destruction to war dogs so they can kill all those evil white folks. Yeah, just give a bunch of warmongers weapons and see what they do with them. This plan isn't retarded at all. While that's going on, the heroes go to the ape clan in order to get help. Where the hell did this guy come from? Was he just hanging on the side of the cliff in case intruders came? That seems really unnecessary. Jesus Christ, I don't even know what to say. This movie wants to denounce racism, but at the same time, they throw in a scene of black people literally barking like apes at a white man. When I saw this scene in theaters, I almost pissed myself. How could anyone take this shit seriously? I mean, you might as well have him chant Ooga Booga while you're at it. One more word, and I will feed you to my children. I'm kidding, we have vegetarians. <laughs> <laughs> He's in a coma. One of our fishermen found him at the edge of the river border. Fishermen? But you literally just said three minutes ago that ape land is only filled with vegetarians. Why would you guys need fishermen if you're vegetarians? Did the writers even bother checking the script for inconsistencies? So we get a scene of T'Challa developing into an actual character. He then wakes up and gathers up the rest of the people who are willing to fight for him. Right before M'Baku delivers my expression throughout most of the movie. Are you done? We will not help you. Hmm. I'm sure this isn't building up any contrast. Ndaka! What's up? Ugh. Also, who are you looking at? Everyone else seems to be looking at T'Challa, but I guess she got distracted by a butterfly. And she's probably thinking about throwing a spear at it because that's her answer for everything. Go! Go, 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 go! Come on, bro! Really? You'd think the guards would notice a white dude in a black mask? It's no shocker this kingdom's already getting overthrown. These people are incompetent. So Killmonger captures bald lady number three. Wakanda forever. <laughs> what? 
So you're telling me he cut her throat and no blood came out? And yeah, I know it's PG-13, they can't show a bunch of blood. If that's the case, then that would make this moment an absolute failure on the cinematography. Her death did not need to be shot that way. Why not film Killmonger's back while he slices her throat and then show Okoya's reaction? Even though I have no idea who this person is, it still would have been more impactful and less silly. Killmonger's about to kill Shuri, which honestly made me root for the bad guy for a moment, but T'Challa comes in and saves her. And then we get one of the worst fight scenes in cinematic history. The MCU is usually great with its special effects. While overused, it can still look real. I don't know who specifically did the effects for Black Panther, but it, it literally looks like a PS3, no, PS2 game, and it looks like shit. They should have done the same practical fight they did in the first fight. Beat him at the own game. You have become them. You will destroy the world, Wakanda included. The world took everything away from me. No, it didn't. The only country to screw up your life was Wakanda. What did the rest of the world do to you? So the gorilla clan with sticks beat up a technologically advanced clan with rhinos at their command. Sure, why not? This movie's already inconsistent enough. I don't really care at this point. So everyone just so happened to be looking at Wakabi as he dropped his weapon, and this led to his men dropping their weapons as well. T'Challa beats Killmonger, and then we get that scene where we're supposed to feel sorry for the villain, even though he's a f***ing moron like everyone else in the movie. Just bury me in the ocean with my ancestors that jumped from the ships. Cause they knew death was better than bondage. Well, technically speaking, they're not really your ancestors if they jumped ship and died before reaching land. Uh, but it sounds cool. Just enjoy the movie. Traveling. Man, what the hell is that? Whoa, guys, check it out. Poorly rendered computer graphics. Who? Who are you? Oh god, are we really going this route? How many damn cliches are in this movie? This movie wasn't even about who he was. It's about what kind of leader is he going to be. So T'Challa decides to help the rest of the world by sharing vibranium, and one of the most overrated movies of all time ends. I'm gonna be honest, I did have high hopes for this movie, but I don't know, I just left that theater disappointed. Black Panther is one of my favorite heroes in the MCU, and for his movie to be treated like this is pretty gross to me.